Hey everyone, this is Dr. Drizzle and welcome to the National Parks Expedition Challenge. Today, we're at the Maggie L. Walker National Historic Site in Richmond, Virginia with our new friend, Ranger Agena. Ranger Agena, thank you so much for having us here. Now, it is a little chilly out here, so if they yeah. see some shivering, know <laughs> that it's about 50 degrees, but with a breeze. But we're in this beautiful site in front of this amazing mural. Mm -hmm. And I know you're going to tell us all about that. But before we do, <laughs> how did you come to the National Parks and Maggie Walker? Oh, wow. It's, it's been an interesting journey for me. Uh, I started out in Roanoke, Virginia as a uh, college student working on the Blue Ridge Parkway. And my career, my goal in life at that time was to become a physics teacher. Okay. Now you might ask how I ended up <laughs> at a historical park. I'm going to ask that a lot today. <laughs> uh, 30 but. some years later, but it's because I started working on the parkway as a fee collector, a GS3, which is the lowest rank that you could have. And I was only supposed to sit in a fee booth and collect fees and greet visitors as they came to the campground. But they gave me an opportunity to get out and also go through the woods and do the paths and trails. Uh, they also had me give programs at the campfires. And I found that I had a love for the parks that I didn't realize that I had. So from there, I was able to, to share my story as an African-American woman growing up in the United States and talk about people who were in history contributing to the United States, such as uh, I worked at Booker T. Washington National Monument. That was my first permanent job. Then I transferred out to Independence National Historical Park, where I talked in about the Liberty Bell and Ben Franklin and all of those things. The most time I spent was at Valley Forge. Oh. And you think it's breezy and cold here, try a Valley Forge day in February. Wow. Uh, when you're out interpreting to thousands or so Boy Scouts about the Valley Forge encampment. But at the same time, go ahead six months in June, and when the Army marched out in that story, and it's 90 plus degrees. Wow. So we, I learned to love the extremes that you would find in any of the national parks. Uh, and finally, I got here to Maggie Walker National Historic Site in about 2010. So I'm <laughs> approaching my 12th year at Maggie Walker Site and absolutely loving it because it allows me to pull together my love of history and my love of telling stories of, about African American men and women. And also now that I'm a supervisor, I can help other people learn um, and, and learn to tell those stories and help get things in place for, so that they can grow like I was allowed to grow. Well, that is a beautiful story. And fun fact, one of our first virtual experiences back in maybe 2013 was at Valley Forge in January, two days after the new year. So <laughs> I can tell you it was extremely cold and we talked about the engineering piece of their whales. Uh, so look at the connection yeah. we're already making here. But I feel just by knowing you just for a little bit that you found your home here. Yes. Like this is the place you want to be. There are so many stories that I have read about Maggie L. Walker, but I'm gonna let you, the expert, tell us about this place and why we mm -hmm. should be looking to this woman for leadership. Well, Mrs. Maggie Lena Walker was an amazing woman who lived uh, if during the time that the Civil War had was just coming to a close until the dawn of the early civil rights movement. In other words, she was born in 1864 in July, and she died in December 1934. And those 70 years of her life spanned a time of great change. 
we often in the national parks call this uh, looking at the time from civil war to civil rights. Okay. And look at it as a journey, not just one battlefield or battle or one piece of uh, marches or for civil rights. It was a journey, a continuum. And we today continue Mrs. Walker's story. And that's why it's so important for us to, to look at her lifetime. It comes in a part that a lot of times is overlooked in our history books because you have your American US history condensed so much that you can only hit so many things. Right. When you take time to look at Maggie Walker, you see about how rights were expanded and then how they were slowly stripped away when he, after the Civil War, during Reconstruction, to get to the point where segregation, it was legal to discriminate, and it was in the, encased in the laws. If your rights have been stripped away by law, how do you still continue? How do you still keep hope mm. when you are continually being treated as a second-class citizen? Well, Mrs. Walker both gave that kind of hope to those to help them um, find pride in them, in their, in their community, to come together to lift each other up in unity and figure out ways to fight and advocate for those rights to be restored. So she's doing both things. That's a lot of pressure on one person to wear the emblem of hope and for 70 years, mm -hmm. and from what I've read, starting young, just right. being that person who could go through adversity with hope, and then deliver that to a group of people. So yeah. we're standing in the courtyard right, right. now of this right. National Historic Site. Right. Um, tell us more about her. Like, Sure, sure. Uh, so when we are here at the National Historic Site, Maggie L. Walker National Historic Site. We are in an area where on one side is her home that she bought in um, 1905, moved in with her family in 1905, and lived here until she passed away in 1934. She took a home uh, that was nine rooms when she purchased it, and over the next years that she lived here, she would turn it into a 28-room mansion. Mm. Uh, it was a place for a refuge for her family to, to get away from some of the things that you might confront out in the larger society. Uh, it was a place that people would come and visit with her who were leaders in the African American community and, and otherwise as well. Uh, so we have been able to restore her home inside to the way it looked in the 1930s. And we're able to do that because her family had such a great vision they wanted to keep the house as it was uh, and, and see it as a museum and a, a testament to her life. So they kept it and they, they kept it in great condition, even inside, uh, until it became a national, it, it becomes a national park. So when we are here in the house, uh, we can see what was important to her, her books, her diploma, uh, uh, um, how she made things comfortable for her family and some of the struggles that she had too. Uh, she has an elevator installed in her house, for example, because she uh, can't get up and down the stairs anymore due to complications from diabetes. And so she makes that place a home. Uh, and with that, we are also charged as a national park to preserve the landscape, the streetscape because a house just sitting by itself loses its visual context. Uh, by that I mean, think of um, something just sitting by itself, but you don't see what was around it at the time. Okay. okay. Because this is also located in a National Historic Landmark, the homes on either side of her have survived. So when you come to visit the site and you walk around the corner from the visitor center, you are getting quite a glimpse, very similar to what she would have seen herself. And that way, you are better able to put yourself in the mindset, put yourself in the frame of what you'll see when you go in the house. Well, 
I want to go back to a point where you said that American history is a huge chunk of our story, but we condense it because we need to get some stories told. Mm -hmm. Just like Maggie L. Walker's life, it's 70 years, but there were so many things that happened. Can you think of a particular story or mm -hmm. accomplishment that would be really cool to tell to our students? Well, an accomplishment that is really makes Maggie Walker well known is that in 1903, she started a bank. A bank? A bank. Wow. She founded the St. Luke Penny Savings Bank as part of a movement with her organization. Now, let me tell you the name of the organization. It was the Independent Order of St. Luke. Okay. It was an organization that was designed to help its members help each other, especially if someone was sick or someone had died in the family. They would help each other in those hard times. But Maggie Walker had a vision that the organization could do not only for their own members, but for the entire community. So what she did is that when she became the leader of the organization, she had this vision that she shared with the rest of the members that they should have a newspaper so that people could know what was going on in the community, that they should start a department store to give the women of the community jobs, things that they could learn, something professional that they could do. And then they should have a bank because this in, is a time where um, banks were not giving loans to African Americans. They were not, um, even letting you easily have an account in the white-owned banks because of those segregationist laws and customs. So Maggie Walker proposed that they start a bank for themselves. And that way you could, no matter who you were, get a loan. You could borrow money to get education. You could learn to s and have a place to save your own funds that you could then wow. um, do better for yourself and for your family. So yeah, she did that. And this was, let's put it in, in context, 1903, it wasn't until mm, 17 years later that women across the United States were constitutionally um, uh, granted or the right to even vote. So she did this. She was a pioneer. Yeah, lacking the, the right to vote, lacking the ability to go out and be treated as a, as a full citizen of this country. But she still kept that hope and led the way. She was quite the leader. Something that I'm just in awe of is that she loved her family, right? So yes, she, she took care of them by, by enlarging th this territory. Yes. But then she took that to this whole other thing by wanting to make sure her community also had that encouragement, mm -hmm. um, that support, that right. virtual hug, <laughs> if you will, yes. which really excites me because what a beautiful story for our students watching today. Mm -hmm. You know, normally we ask our students to solve an engineering problem or some mm -hmm. type of STEM problem. But I feel like with Maggie's story that this is much bigger. So you told me earlier that you were a physics. Ah, uh, yes. And so I, as, as a scientist myself, I'm all over that. Uh -huh. Simple machines, levers, wedges, you know, the whole piece of chemical and physical changes. All of that just gets me excited. Me too, me too. So kids, this is going to be your challenge. We're going to tie this challenge to goal number three and goal number 16 of the United Nations Global Goals. Goal number three is about well-being, um, physically, mentally, and emotionally. And then we're also gonna look at goal 16, which talks about peace and social justice. And as my shirt says, being a nice human, being a good human. So we know that Maggie L. Walker loved people and she had a desire to help everyone. Her family was important, but she reached outside of that also to help everyone. So we're going to encourage you to look around your community. Start with your home, then your school and your community. What ways can we, and here's the physics connection, lift <laughs> each other up in our words and deeds? 
Remember that Maggie had a elevator put into her home, which works on simple and complex machines, physics again. <laughs> so you can use that as your model, as what you're looking up. How can you help people be lifted? Now, if you're gonna be that person that is a good human and that is always looking for ways to lift others up, please understand that by doing that, you're also doing great things for yourself. When we do things for others, it just gives us, you know, these, these, this energy of right. I'm helping other people. Now, I don't want you bragging about it because that sort of takes away, but how can you be a leader in your school? How can you find ways to maybe design a t-shirt that encourages each other to smile or be kind? What random acts of kindness can you create privately like it don't have to be out there that you're doing it what little notes can you put on kids desk in your classroom that encourages them what posters can you put in a downtown grocery store or a bank in honor of <laughs> miss maggie l walker but the sky's the limit in this so we're not necessarily building a prototype but we're starting a movement of lifting each other up so we're two women here, and when she succeeds, I succeed. Even though I may not have any part in what my friend Ranger Agena is doing, we're supporting each other, and I want you to be able to do that. Are you okay with that? I'm certainly okay with that, because the other thing about Mrs. Walker is that she started as a child doing these things for her community. And then when she got into a position as the leader of the Independent Order of St. Luke, she started a juvenile department for kids wow. so that they would start learning to be leaders and helping in their community. So in a way, you are helping to tell her story, to continue her us. story. This mural behind me was developed by an amazing artist um, that has now come back to Richmond. So mm -hmm. they did all of the the artistic piece as Ranger Agena <laughs> says. Then the community came in and created this and Ranger Agena did, wait, wait, this. <laughs> that is her <laughs> connection to the story. And she laughs, but without that, I don't see a butterfly, right? So we want all of you to continue Maggie's story. Her family would be so happy and we know that they still have family in the area. Yes. Our stories have to be told. If no one tells Maggie L. Walker's story in 40 years, people will forget her. If people quit talking about other people that have made history amazing or even that have made it not so amazing, we'll forget. So you said we have to tell things in a complete stop. It can't be a short story or a, just a one little poem. We're right. writing a novel here, right? right? And we're all a all, part of it. All telling those pieces. And sometimes you break those stories down into smaller stories. If I were to try to illustrate to you everything that happened, for example, in Maggie Walker's day or from her diary, that would get long if I captured every second. But to tell the parts of the stories, the making sure that you're covering everything, that is what we need to hear and do uh, that, that helps us. So we need your help in doing that. When you create your idea, your t-shirt, your poster, your leadership club that you're gonna start before breakfast every <laughs> Tuesday at your school, you need to let us know. So you're gonna reach out on social media and tag me at, at Dacia92 and also tag Maggie L. Walker, National Historic Site, and you're gonna see the um, social media handles running across the bottom of the screen. And let us know what you're doing because they're gonna be excited about that and they're gonna celebrate that because they work here, but they need help telling the story. Now, saying that, <laughs> you're not old. We're not old, but you're not gonna be here forever doing this. No. Like sometime down the road, you might wanna head to the beach or something, I don't know. <laughs> but these kids want your job. They uh, want the beautiful gray and brown and green <laughs> and the flat hat, right? That's right. 
So can you look at the <laughs> camera, Ranger Regina, and just give them some advice on what they can start doing now mm. to to, to be to joining be what us? You're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, what you can do is go to the national parks and explore them with your families. We have passes that fourth graders can get in order to go into all the national parks and bring their families with them with, for no charge. So that's what I'd say, start out exploring first and then uh, learn about the national parks and volunteer in the national parks. We have a program here at Maggie Walker site where we invite students every summer to come out and learn about leadership from all around the greater Richmond area. Maybe you want to start something like that in, with a national park near you. And that, by doing that, you get to know the parks and the park rangers get to know you as well. And then, you know, you can get a job with the National Park Service by um, using at any of those skills that you have. Not everybody is going to be an interpreter like me. Uh, we have people who help maintain the buildings and the grounds, restore the historic home, make sure that it stays in a good condition. We have folks who, who make sure we all get our paychecks. Um, they're very, very important. So if you're really good in math, you might want to, to do those kinds of things. So there's a lot of opportunities, and I would say just if you can envision it, in the same way that Maggie Walker envisioned a better future, envision yourself helping us out in the national parks. We love to have the next generation help us. They need help here and at all the 423 plus national park sites across the country. We need you to help lift us up and each other up. And by doing that, you'll be lifting yourself up. Thank you so much for having us here today. What a beautiful place. Oh, wonderful. And her story is amazing. We're gonna encourage our kids and teachers to find um, more information through your website That's right. so they can find out more about Maggie L. Walker and other people like her That's that right. may not be well known. There are people out there every day that we are finding about, right? So right. keep learning. This is Dr. Drizzle and Ranger Agena from the National Parks Expedition Challenge and we're out of here.